Hey guys, my name is Allison and this is Pause Let's Chat. Hey everyone, so today um, I'm going to talk about something we dread happening and we dread talking about and that is getting bit. So I got bit yesterday and I got bit last week, so I just felt like this was a good time to have this conversation. It's really difficult to tell a client that their dog bit you and I want to stress how important it is to be honest about a dog's behavior from the start, like when you're grooming them, because if that dog ends up biting you, it's a lot easier in the law, like to tell them, hey, your dog bit me, and they already know their dog's bad. So let's start from the beginning. I have a doodle that the client knows is not very well behaved at all, and um, they have a trainer, and we're, we're working with it, but um, every time it comes to the groomer, it gets worse and worse and worse. And I've only done the dog for a total of four times. It's still a puppy, but it's a doodle, it's big. and. Um, the very first time I did it, I was honest with them and I was like, you know, your dog is, has some issues, so we, we've got to work through this. And if I would have lied to that client and been like, no, your dog is great, I love it, it's so cute, da 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 and like said that every appointment and then it bit me and all of a sudden I'm telling them, oh, your dog bit me and they're like, oh my gosh, but you said it's always been so great. Then like... What are you going to do with that? So I always try to be honest with the clients and I'm like, hey, you know, like we really need to try and get this under control. Your dog doesn't like this. It doesn't respond well to this when you're at home. Why don't you practice with it? Just so it makes the grooming experience a lot less stressful on the dog. And I try and work with the pet in through the situation as best I can. But it gets to a point where, you know, you might get bit. And in this industry it can be really dangerous and that's why a I don't do cats cat bites are like who real dangerous um but dog bites can be too I mean this one's healing from last week on my knuckle um the one from yesterday wasn't as bad but you know that can put you out of work and then what are you supposed to do so when a dog bites me I, I will call the client pretty much right then and I'll be like, hey, this is Allison. I was calling to let you know your dog's going to be ready in about 45 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. And by the way, we're having some issues. Your dog bit me. Um, so there will be a special handling fee today and we'll need to talk about things we can do for the future um, if you want me to continue to be your groomer. I have never had so have that happen and someone be like in denial about it because I have been honest from the start. Like they know their dog is a little jerk. If I was a lie, if I was lying and I always told them, oh my gosh, your dog is so great. And then all of a sudden I told them the dog bit me they'd probably be really confused and be upset. And I mean, they have every right to be. Like, dogs are like people's kids, you know? So when you tell them that their kid's acting up, like, it's not fun. It's not fun to tell them that they have a dog that misbehaves, let alone tell them that their dog, their dog has bitten you. But that's part of our career, and we have to deal with it. So um, be honest from the very beginning. The very beginning. You know, you can sugarcoat it a little bit, but you've got to let people know how their dogs act. It's your livelihood. I mean, they need to know their dog is a jerk because they can practice with things at home. Like I'll tell people if the dog's terrified of the clippers, scared of the clippers. Here, I'll turn it on and like kind of rub it on their body like this. At home, they can do that with an electric toothbrush. There is stuff they can do to help the dog be desensitized to grooming and they should be. It's not our job to make sure the dog is absolutely perfect for everything. You know, we try our best here, but some dogs need a little extra help. So the parents, I mean, if this was a human child, it would be the parent's job to step in at home. So I don't know why we take all the blame for everything, but um, that's another story. So 
You want to be honest with the client from the start. And then you have to tell them they're bit you. And you don't want to be angry when saying it. I mean, when you're angry, they come back at you angry. You know, so yesterday I called the lady. I was like, hey, um, so yeah, you know, the last couple times I've done your dog, I've told you it hasn't, it doesn't really love the whole grooming process. It hates its feet and its front legs and its face. And so, yeah, today, I don't know if the dog was just having a worse day today, but it, it did bite me today. So there's going to be a fee. And the mom was just like, oh my gosh, I, I'm so sorry. I cannot believe that happened. I, I am so sorry. And then I try to figure out why the dog is acting out. I, I asked them, and I was like, is the dog stressed? Because it's bad, but it's never tried to bite. So today, you know, that's a that's a that's a leap I was like you know is the dog stressed did you all move is there anything going on um and sure enough she's like yeah we moved about two weeks ago so I try to help the parents through it instead of just blaming them for everything um you know I moved like three months ago and my dog was really stressed and it was not that she bit me but I mean she was stressed and out of sorts so that can cause dogs to behave different so I told him, I was like, you know, why don't we look into like a mild sedative before their next appointment? Your dogs never loved the grooming process anyways, and it would really just help them calm down. And that's pr all I say. I say, you know, talk to your vet, figure out which one's going to be best for your dog. Some dogs can't be on a mild sedative because of existing conditions already. So talk to your vet and we'll figure it out. And they always do. I mean, there's a sedative called Ace Promazine and Trazodone. And whenever I tell people about it to kind of soften the burn, I'm like, you know, I take a Valium to go to the dentist and I'm still walking and talking, but I just need someone to drive me there, you know. And the people are like, oh, okay, so the, it just needs to like take the edge off. And a lot of the time I'll tell them it's not safe for your dog like if it's acting psycho you know I'm scared your dog's gonna throw itself into a seizure and I don't have tools here I don't have anything here to help that so we either need to put it on a mild sedative to help it calm down or you, your dog needs to be groomed at a vet so I always try to make sure that it's about them and the dog's well-being rather than myself and that seems to really help kind of soften the blow Sorry, this little dog checked in. It's nervous and I'm not putting it in the cage because I'm going to bathe it after I'm done with this. Honestly, that's it. It's just a little chat on how do you talk to your clients about everything. Um, there's ways you can do it and be nice about it. Sadly, it is something we have to work through as groomers, but that's part of, part of it, right? Right. This little one is sedated, so... So you have been kicked out of how many groomers in the past? Like five, six? So this is its first time here and it is on a mild sedative today. And I mean, it was as simple as the client calling and she was like, I just don't know what to do. And I was, my recommendation of, have you all tried medication? No, we haven't. Nobody said anything that we could, that that was even a thing. Like, what are we doing? It is our job to educate our clients, you know, like, gosh, even if you're not a medication type person, CBD oil, CBD treats, like all of these options are great options. Offer CBD in your shop. That way, if the dog's acting up right then and there, you can call the parent and be like, hey, I have like a signed waiver on file that you're allowed to and just get approval that you can give their dog something to help calm them down because for their dog's livelihood like safety you need to really try we have sharp objects and it can be really dangerous when a dog is like alligator rolling and freaking out and peeing everywhere because you know this happens it happened to me yesterday it is dangerous for not only us but the dog and that is what i try to make sure the owners understand like Yes, it's dangerous for me, but it's dangerous for your dog. And when I put it that way, they're a lot more sympathetic versus just being like, yeah, it bit me. It makes it really hard for me to do my job. You know, it just misbehaves and I just can't do it. I need to get done and it takes me longer and blah, blah, blah. And me, 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 me. So make it about the dog and they like, they're like, oh my gosh, it can't, be. I don't want it to have a seizure. Like, you know, don't scare them, but there it is very possible the dog can get so upset during grooming it can throw itself into a seizure perfectly healthy it can happen 
so I make sure they know that. And honestly, if it's a dog I never want to do again because it was that bad, I'll tell them straight up. Your dog acts so bad, it's going to throw itself into a seizure. And I am not a vet clinic. I'm not in a vet. I do not have stuff here to help your dog if that situation happened. Your dog would be safest groomed at a vet clinic. Bluntly put, here's some recommendations. It works every time. And then, boom, the dog's gone. I don't have to deal with the dog anymore. And I didn't have to tell them, your dog is so bad, I don't ever want to do it again. Don't ever come back. I didn't have to say any of that. It's all implied in your dog needs to be safe and go to the vet. Sorry, groomers who are groomers at a vet clinic because I send all the bad dogs your way. I am not a specialty groomer. I do not specialize in any, like, I mean, in misbehaved dogs and troubled dogs. I, it, it stresses me out, honestly. I really cannot handle it very well. I have several dogs that off of the sedative medication, I have been able to, I call it bringing back. I have like a Cocker Spaniel I've been working with for about a year. You couldn't even touch him. You could not even touch this dog. Got it on a sedative and we worked a little bit every single groom. And finally, to this day, he only takes like a quarter of the sedative and takes some CBD oil and some treats and whatnot. It, I can get through the whole groom without him even offering to bite me. He's still shaking and still nervous and still upset, but he's okay. And it sometimes takes that medication to get them to realize, hey, it's not so bad. That's all I got today. So <sighs> a little quick, easy, fun chat. <laughs> but follow me on Instagram like this video, subscribe please. If you think my videos are helpful, I would really appreciate it. And I'm gonna get to work on this little guy and see how, how he goes. Cause apparently he's never successfully gotten a haircut in two years because he's that bad. So yeah, I don't think you're that bad. We'll find out, <laughs> but that's it guys. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.